So today I talk about a U0002 code, what it is and how you go about fixing it. And so what is a U0002 code? Well, it's a high speed CAN communication bus performance. And what does this mean? Well, basically modern vehicles have a lot of different computers built into them. They can have an engine control module, a powertrain control module, a transmission control module, a body control module, and there could be more. In each one of these control modules, they control different functions. So for example, like an engine control module or an ECM, that would control all the engine functions like injectors, engine timing, O2 sensors, things like this. Another example is the body control module. This computer controls all the functions inside the body like electric door locks, alarms, electric windows, and things like that. But all these control modules, they all need to talk to each other. They need to share information. And to do this, they use what's called a CAN bus or a controller area network bus. And basically all that means is it's all the wires that run around to all the different control modules, along with right where they plug in, they need to have a good connection. An easy way to think about the CAN bus is like a home where you've got ethernet wires run to all the different computers inside of a house and to the router so that they all can talk to each other. So if you ever connected a computer inside your home using an ethernet connection with wires and ran it to a router, then that's basically like the same thing, but inside of a vehicle, they call it a CAN bus. There is different types of buses, but what's called a CAN bus is a very common one. So if you do go to work on the CAN bus on your particular vehicle, basically all that means is it's all the wires running around to all the different computer control modules. But when you get a U0002 code, there's some kind of problem going on with this. Basically, some of the computer modules can't talk to each other. And so it's set in this code and it's going to have to be troubleshooted. No, why? And one thing to note about this code is it can't be set differently depending on the manufacturer. So it's a good idea to get the exact definition of this code from the manufacturer of your vehicle. There can't be different things that can trigger this code depending on the manufacturer and the year and different things like this. For example, Dodge has this code listed when the body control module or the front control module detects a short inside the CAN bus. So it can be a good idea to look up the definition of this code from your manufacturer for the year of your vehicle. And so what are some possible causes of a U0002 code? Well, the first thing to do is be sure that the battery is good, be sure the alternator is charging correctly, and be sure there's no bad grounds going around all the different computers. It's because basically all these different control modules, they all need a good stable power supply or else that's going to cause issues. And so first thing to do is be sure your battery is good. You can test the alternator and be sure it's charging correctly. This is fairly easy to do if you have a multimeter. Just start at the vehicle and check to see what the output voltage is at the battery terminals. Most vehicle alternator outputs will be between 13.5 to 14.5 volts. It can vary, so you can look up what your specific alternator output is supposed to be. But 13.5 to 14.5 volts is fairly common. And if the alternator is charging below what it's rated to be running at or above it, then that's going to cause issues. But the first thing to go and do when you have this problem is be sure that the battery is good, be sure the alternator is charging correctly, and be sure everything's grounded good. And the next thing that could cause this is a blowing fuse. So if a fuse blows that goes to one of these computers, then that's going to cause problems. Depending on the manufacturer, this is going to be different. The fuses can have different names. They'll be located differently, things along these lines. So basically go through and try to check any computer-related fuses. So this would be things labeled like ECM, PCM, ECU, VCM, TCM, things along these lines, because the next thing that could cause this is a blown fuse. The next thing that could cause this is that there's some kind of issue going on inside the wiring harness going around to all the different computer control modules. And this could be something like a bad connection. There's an open or a short for some reason, something along these lines. So all these wires that run around to all the different computer control modules, if there's any kind of issue with any of them, then that's going to cause problems. It can be difficult to find an open or a short inside of the wiring, but if you can, just go around and look at it. Sometimes you can see damage to it. Sometimes rodents can get up inside of there and chew on wires, or sometimes the wiring can fall down and get burnt on the exhaust, or things along these lines. If you don't see any obvious damage, then at that point you're going to need to get schematics and a multimeter and start testing all the wiring to be sure that the wiring's good, which like I said, can be difficult to do. But the next thing that could cause this is that there's some kind of wiring issue. And the next thing that could cause this is that one of the computer modules has failed, that one of them's just having some kind of problem and it's not communicating with the other ones. Troubleshooting a bad computer module can be difficult to do, but there is a few things you could do to check to see if it has failed. Mainly sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes when these computer modules fail, Sometimes they get burnt components on the board. Then when this happens, you'll be able to smell a burnt smell around them. This doesn't happen every time. They can fail, 
and not have no burnt components or any obvious signs of failure. But it does happen sometimes that when they fail, some of the components on there can get burnt. And when this happens, you'll be able to smell a burnt smell. So if you can't smell a burnt smell, then very likely there is a problem with that computer module. Also, you could go around and be sure they got a good ground going to the case on them. Because if they don't have a good ground, then that can throw these computers off and it could cause them to have issues. If you think that's the problem, you can't jumper to them with the jumper wire and then jumper off to a good ground and see if the issue clears up or something along those lines. It's because sometimes they just don't have a good ground and it could cause them to have problems. But like I said, it can be kind of difficult to troubleshoot whether or not you have a bad computer control module. But the last thing on the list is going to be a bad computer module. And so that's basically it. I just want to give a basic overview of how you go about fixing a vehicle with the U0002 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me. I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you. Please click like. Please click subscribe. And have a good day.